Hey everyone, today we're starting chapter one of the BNF, the gastrointestinal system, and jumping into our first content, chronic bowel disorders. In this section, we'll explore coeliac disease, diverticular disease, and diverticulitis, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome. In this video, I'm really trying to make the best short notes for you. If you just take a little time every day to look at these notes we make together, you'll see how easy it becomes to remember everything. So grab your short notebook right now, and let's get started. Coeliac disease. Coeliac disease is an autoimmune condition. Hmm. What is an autoimmune disorder? An autoimmune disorder happens when the immune system mistakes the body's own cells for enemies and attacks them. Okay. Coeliac disease is an autoimmune condition that causes chronic inflammation of the small intestine. It is triggered by gluten, a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye, which leads to an abnormal immune response in the intestinal lining. This can cause malabsorption of nutrients, leading to symptoms like diarrhea, bloating, and abdominal pain. Treatment goals. The main goals in managing coeliac disease are eliminating symptoms such as diarrhea, bloating, and abdominal pain. Reducing the risk of complications from malabsorption like osteoporosis or nutrient deficiencies. Non-drug treatment. The only effective treatment is a strict, lifelong gluten-free diet. There are gluten-free products available on prescription to help patients maintain this diet. Drug treatment supplementation. Patients with coeliac disease often have malabsorption of key nutrients, such as calcium and vitamin D, which increases their risk of osteoporosis. Nutrient supplementation may be needed if dietary intake is not enough. Patients should not self-medicate with over-the-counter vitamins or minerals. Any supplementation should be planned with a healthcare professional to ensure safety and proper monitoring. Refractory coeliac disease. In rare cases where coeliac disease does not respond to a gluten-free diet, refractory coeliac disease, patients should be referred to a specialist center. Prednisolone can be considered for initial management while awaiting specialist advice. Okay, let's talk about diverticular disease and diverticulitis next. What is diverticulosis? Diverticulosis is the condition of having multiple pouches in the colon that are not inflamed. Diverticulosis is usually asymptomatic. Wait, what? Wait, what is an asymptomatic? Asymptomatic means having a disease without showing any symptoms. Okay, when diverticula cause symptoms like abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, or occasional rectal bleeding, it's called diverticular disease. Acute diverticulitis occurs when diverticula become inflamed or infected, leading to severe lower abdominal pain, fever, changes in bowel habits, rectal bleeding, tenderness, or a palpable mass. Complicated cases can cause abscess, perforation, peritonitis, fistula, obstruction, or sepsis. Don't worry if these words sound a bit tricky. We'll go over them more in the future. Treatment goals, relieve symptoms, improve quality of life, manage acute episodes, prevent recurrence and complications. Non-drug management, diet and lifestyle, eat whole grains, fruits and vegetables, gradually increase fiber to reduce bloating, hydration, drink enough fluids, exercise, weight management, and smoking cessation reduce risk. Patient education, inform about disease course, symptom management, and when to seek medical advice. In complicated acute diverticulitis, surgery may be required. Drug management, diverticulosis, usually no specific treatment, bulk forming laxatives can help with constipation. We'll talk more about bulk forming laxatives in the future. Diverticular disease, bulk forming laxatives if high fiber diet isn't enough, paracetamol for mild pain, antispasmodics for cramps, avoid NSAIDs and opioids, risk of perforation. Acute diverticulitis, simple analgesia if systemically well, watchful waiting, antibiotics may not be needed for mild cases. Refer to hospital if symptoms persist, worsen, or if complicated, severe pain, rectal bleeding. Prevention of recurrence, aminosalicylates or prophylactic antibiotics are not recommended to prevent future attacks. All right, next up, let's talk about inflammatory bowel disease. Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a long-term condition that causes inflammation in the digestive system. It can affect anywhere in the gut, but most often the small intestine and colon. The bowel wall becomes thick with deep ulcers and cracks, and sometimes healthy areas appear in between the diseased parts. The disease usually goes through flare-ups and remissions. During a flare, people may have tummy pain, diarrhea, fever, weight loss, or bleeding. Complications can include bowel narrowing, abscesses, and fistulae, abnormal passages between the bowel and nearby organs. 
Crohn's can also lead to anemia, poor nutrition, delayed growth in children, and even a higher risk of bowel cancer. Other areas like joints, eyes, liver, skin, skin, and bones can also be affected. Now let's look at treatment goals. The main aim is to control flare-ups, keep the disease in remission, and improve quality of life while reducing side effects. First, lifestyle. Stopping smoking and eating well are really important. Sometimes surgery is needed if the disease is severe. For flare-ups, steroids like prednisolone or hydrocortisone are often used. In milder cases, budesonide or aminosalicylates may help, though they're less strong. If flare-ups keep happening, stronger medicines such as azathioprine, mercaptopurine, or methotrexate are added. For severe cases, biologics like infliximab, adalimumab, vedolizumab, or ustekinumab are used. For maintenance, drugs like azathioprine or mercaptopurine can help keep the disease quiet. Steroids aren't used long-term because of their side effects. After surgery, azathioprine with a short course of metronidazole may be considered. For symptom control, medicines like loperamide, codeine, or cholestyramine may be used for diarrhea. In fistulating Crohn's disease, simple fistulae may not need treatment, but if they are painful or infected, local drainage and surgery may be needed, along with antibiotics like metronidazole or ciprofloxacin, immunosuppressants like azathioprine, or biologics like infliximab, are often continued long-term to keep fistulae under control. For more complex fistulae, surgery is sometimes the only option. Remember, you'll have a lot of knowledge about this medicine in the future, so for now, just remember it. So overall, Crohn's disease is a lifelong condition, but with the right treatment plan, lifestyle, medicines, and sometimes surgery, many people can manage it well. Okay, moving on, now we're gonna chat about ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is a chronic inflammatory condition of the bowel. It's lifelong with a pattern of flare-ups and remissions. The inflammation starts in the rectum and can extend upwards, sometimes affecting the whole colon. Depending on how far it spreads, it's called proctitis, proctosigmoiditis, left-sided colitis, or pancolitis. Typical symptoms during an active flare include bloody diarrhea, an urgent need to pass stool, and abdominal pain. Some serious complications include an increased risk of colorectal cancer, weak bones from secondary osteoporosis, blood clots, and a dangerous condition called toxic megacolon. Now let's talk about treatment goals. The aim is to control active flares, bring about remission, and then maintain remission. Treatment depends on severity and how much of the bowel is involved. Mild to moderate disease, the main treatment is aminosalicylates. These can be given as oral tablets, enemas, or suppositories, depending on where the inflammation is. If that's not enough, corticosteroids may be added for four to eight weeks. Moderate to severe disease, stronger medicines are used such as biologics or JAK inhibitors, usually under specialist care. Severe flare-ups, this is a medical emergency. Patients are admitted to hospital and given intravenous steroids. If they don't respond, drugs like cyclosporin or infliximab may be used, or sometimes urgent surgery is needed. For maintenance of remission, most patients continue on oral aminosalicylates. Corticosteroids are not suitable for long-term use because of side effects. If relapses keep happening, stronger medicines like azathioprine or mercaptopurine may be considered. Biologics and JAK inhibitors can also be continued long-term in some cases. Finally, surgery may be needed if the disease doesn't respond to medication or keeps relapsing badly. So in short, ulcerative colitis is a lifelong disease, but with the right mix of medicines and sometimes surgery, most people can manage it and maintain a good quality of life. And here's the last one for today. Irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, is a very common and long-term condition, usually showing up in people between 20 and 30 years old, and it's seen more in women. The main symptoms include tummy pain, diarrhea or constipation, bloating, and sometimes passing mucus. Most people notice that their symptoms feel better after going to the toilet. Because other gut problems can look similar, it's really important that IBS is properly diagnosed before starting treatment. The main goal of treatment is simple. It's about controlling symptoms and improving quality of life. Let's start with non-drug treatments. Lifestyle and diet changes make a big difference. That means eating regularly, avoiding long gaps between meals, and staying physically active. Drinking enough water, around eight cups a day, is also important. Patients are usually advised to cut down on caffeine, 
alcohol, fizzy drinks, and avoid sweeteners like sorbitol if diarrhea is a problem. Fiber is a key part too. Soluble fiber like oats or espagula husk can help, but insoluble fiber like bran may actually make things worse. Some people also benefit from probiotics, but these should be tried for at least four weeks to see if they really help. And if symptoms still persist, a specialist might suggest trying exclusion diets to rule out certain foods. Now about medications. The choice depends on the main symptoms. For tummy cramps, antispasmodics such as mebeverine or peppermint oil can help. For constipation, laxatives can be used but not lactulose since it causes bloating. In severe long-term constipation, a drug called linaclotide might be considered. For diarrhea, the first-line treatment is loperamide. Patients are often taught to adjust their laxative or anti-diarrhea medication, depending on stool consistency, with the aim of getting a soft, well-formed stool. If symptoms like abdominal pain don't improve with these, doctors may add a low-dose antidepressant, such as amitriptyline. This works on pain signals in the gut, not just mood. If that still doesn't help, an SSRI may be tried. And finally, if after 12 months of treatment nothing works, psychological support or therapy can also be offered. So IBS is all about long-term management, mixing lifestyle changes, diet, and medicines so patients can get back to living more comfortably. Okay, this is your short note for today. You can change it or add other things as you like. Remember, you need to know all these words if you want to move forward in the medical field. And that's all for chronic bowel disorders. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe.